recorded remotely. Um, but uh, the people on the show, neither of you have actually been on the show before. Uh, so I think that uh, maybe the best way to get this started is to just, um, if you want to introduce yourselves and maybe a little bit of background about the music you do, and then we can sort of take it from there. And I saw you play live recently, which is a rarity in this time to actually see a live show. So I I'm glad I had the opportunity, especially before we did this. But if you want to just kind of take it from here and introduce yourselves, uh, you know, maybe let us know who's, who's not here. And then uh, a bit of background would be great. All right. Um, well, our group is called Smithsonian, uh, spelled Smithsonian, whichever you prefer. Right. It's, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Chano. I, I do mostly guitar and vocals, and then we got Jonathan, who does everything. Okay. What do you play, Jonathan? Uh, I'm Jonathan Alexiak, and uh, I play piano normally. Actually, I don't play anything normally. <laughs> I play uh, upright bass, clarinet, trumpet, and a bit of ukulele. Okay. All the things. All that the is things. a lot of things, yeah. It's a lot of instruments. Yeah, I don't yeah. play anything well, so you know, that kind of balances. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, we've also got one more member. Uh, Brittany Melnicek, who couldn't join us tonight. Okay. Um, she uh, also sings with us, and she plays percussion, mostly like snare and brushes. Cool. And I think that maybe, um, you know, we should start with the name. I wasn't sure if it was, you know, like you said, there's two different ways you can pronounce it, I guess. <laughs> I assumed it was some kind of Smithsonian pun, but <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure. So where, where does that come from? Like, that's a kind of a odd choice. Maybe, maybe not for, for a band name. I, are you looking at me? Yeah, she's looking at me. I'm looking at whoever wants to answer that question there. Yeah. Well, I've, I've had this affliction since I was a child, you know, looking at things and uh, pronouncing them differently. Uh, originally came from, you know, mispronouncing things inadvertently. And then I thought sure. it was, if once it got a laugh, you would start doing it on purpose and see if you got a reaction. So, you know, and then how else can you pronounce? Joking. I know, right, I know. Right. So I'm covered either way. They're like, oh, you pronounced that wrong. You must have been joking. That's right. I was joking. Has it caused any difficulties though with people trying to figure out what the name is? I mean, or how to pronounce oh, it? Or do no, you... it's wonderful. No matter how they pronounce it, we correct them. <laughs> you can't lose. It's a win-win situation. You can't yeah. lose, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so, like I was saying, I saw you live. I saw you play at the uh, the Red House concerts, which which have been fantastic. Uh, it's really nice that there was a kind of an option for for artists to perform like in front of you know no matter how small the audience was during this crazy pandemic time and. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd heard the name and I, you know, I knew that you existed. I knew you were playing, for lack of a better word, old timey music. And th there's obviously, you know, a lot more to it than just old timey music. But I mean, it's, I guess, striking that you're playing music in 2020 that is from, you know, a hundred years earlier. So uh, I guess, how do you put together a group, you know, a hundred years after this stuff was popular and find uh, enough other people who are as passionate about that, th those styles of music from that era? <laughs> Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, I guess the group was Jonathan's idea, actually. And um, both of Don't us... Don't blame this on me. <laughs> oh, I'm putting all the blame on you. Um, <laughs> well, because one person being into that is, it, it makes sense, right? I mean, people get into weird mm -hmm. niches and they, they find things that really appeal to them. But, you know, that's a very specific, you, you do something very specific and from a very specific era that a lot of people, you know, in your age groups, I'm sure, are just completely unfamiliar with, right? Yeah, um, well... Yeah, I guess, I mean, we were both into older music and um, like I'm in another group, Juvelle, we do yeah. like 30s and 40s music and, and Jonathan has several projects um, where he does like, you have a Dixieland project, right? And like a mm -hmm. whole bunch of other things. So cool. you know, it just kind of felt natural. I, Smithsonian also wasn't originally supposed to be like just 20s music. Okay. We've just kind of been adding more. We used to have <laughs> quite a mix. We had some 50s music. We had some like modern music. Right. Um, yeah. Well, it, it's funny you say that you, you know, you were into old music because I think most people nowadays, they'll say they meant to old music and they mean like 70s at the, at the, <laughs> at the earliest, right? I mean, this is, you know, yeah. multiple generations before that. So I, I guess for both of you, like, what, what is the appeal of that stuff? I mean, it, it's definitely cool. And there's, there's obviously, you know, it's influenced and inspired so many things that have come since. And you can, you know, you can, you can hear that kind of trajectory. But what's the appeal for you to, to go back and get at the source like that? Well, uh, well it's fun. Maybe. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that's it. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that the for the audience, anyways, the the twenties music and the twenties aesthetic has really had a, a resurgence in the last five or ten years or so. Ever since sort of 
the great Gatsby reboot came out. Right. And things like postmodern jukebox and people are sort of they like that they like that sound and they like that style even if they're not familiar with it. You know, so it, and we're coming at it from sort of the other way around where we were into the music first. You know, we just enjoyed the music and we performed the music, cool. and then it, it kind of intersected <laughs> with you know the, the sort of resurgence and interest in in the era and the the style sure. of music. Not to mention that um, it is now 2020, and uh, like along with the whole Gatsby, you know, 20s resurgence. Now everyone's all excited about oh, it's the 20s again. You right, know? right. So you kind of, I guess, piggybacking off of those, we we're, <laughs> we're trying to make the most of it. I guess. <laughs> well, I guess you picked the right time if you're going to come back with this kind of music at any point. I guess 2020 is is ideal, right? Yeah, it was Absolutely. very serendipitous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long has this actually been a unit? I mean, like, you know, obviously you've all been playing music separately uh, for, for a while now, but how long have you actually been a Smithsonian, Smithsonian, Smithsonian? Um, I'm not going to be able to pick a version of the name. No, it isn't. I'm not going to keep switching between. We, but want, yeah. we want you to be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how long has it been? It's been probably over, over two, years. two years. Over two years at this point. Um, we had one member change. Um, we had Brittany join probably about a year or a year and a half ago. Yeah, just about a year ago. Okay. Okay. About a year ago. Um, yeah. So she joined us. Um, she was actually a, a like a choral director. Didn't play much percussion, but we we kind of <laughs> pressured we'll her, her into it. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I guess about two two and a half years. Okay. Okay. And what, what kind of reception have you got so far? I mean, I like again, I, I really loved it when I saw it live, but like, who is your audience? Because <laughs> I don't want to just assume that it's like, you know, 108 and up, but, <laughs> but like, it's I mean. Definitely, definitely my mom. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's a fan for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, you know, hey, uh, uh, not that I'm old, but I mean, you know, uh, I imagine that people younger than me even are probably coming to some of your shows. And like, what's, what's the reaction been? Like, how are people who are, you know, well apart from this era that you're basically you know, uh, reviving, uh, how are they deal? How are they appreciating it? Well, I think it's, it's kind of, again, it's kind of an intersection of things where we have, you know, there's the kind of the interest in the sound of the twenties and the ukulele groups and the, and the thing, and, and everybody likes harmony. So we do a lot of, sure, yeah. harmony. That's, that's kind of a draw. And, uh, w we still try and be very faithful to the, the source material, if you want to call it that, you know, getting the sound right and the aesthetic, right. Um, but we also have a lot of fun with it. I think that's more what people are drawn to. And if, if there's no specific demographic we're targeting or anything, it's just, we do what we do and we have a lot of fun with it. And I think people are more drawn to the, the fun and, and the camaraderie and the rapport that we have than, uh, than the music. They like the harmonies sure. and, they, and they like the fun. Yeah, that's a yeah. good, good reason to listen to something for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see that on stage too. I mean, again, I've seen the, what, the one show, but it, it, it seems like you were enjoying yourselves you know, doing oh, it. So yeah. it's, it's always nice, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hope so. It's nice because you can definitely see some people perform and they look like they're just bored out of their mind. Or, or you know, and it's like, it, it sucks the life out of it, right? I mean, uh, at least if you're clearly, you know, having a good time on there, it, it helps for sure. Like, I, as an audience member. Well, yeah, the, the, the irony is that we, we both have a, a, a pretty solid jazz background in playing with jazz groups and the, and the jazz idiom. Yeah. And then you're not allowed to have fun. Don't show any emotion or don't smile of all things. Well, that's not for heaven's sake. Don't do that. It's then not a that's rule. Not <laughs> right. Yeah. It, that's not necessarily a rule, but you, you know, you don't see it a lot. Um, yeah. But jazz used to be, I mean, I guess just pure entertainment. If you look at like the, the 30s and, and I guess even the 40s as it started to go in different directions. Um, you know, specifically in the 30s with the swing era and big bands and in the 20s, it was definitely all about like entertainment. Yeah. And you had to be more than just a musician. You had to be like a performer and an entertainer. And a, a lot of musicians back in the day uh, uh, weren't just musicians, you know, like um, like you go back to, I guess, Jonathan knows more about this, but like the vaudeville and such where like you had to have other skills. You had to be able to, you know, act or dance. Yeah. The triple threat thing, right? You had to be able to sing and dance and act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incidentally, I, I can't do any of those, but, uh, <laughs> but we try. We, we try to entertain. Yeah, you're single, single threat. Yeah. Single threat. Well, and the three, between the three of us, we're, the band is a triple threat. So right, we, right. So you, you have that covered off. Yeah. That's there awesome. you go. We're very threatening. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> 
the, the name the name is threatening. It's just too confusing. <laughs> to, yeah. Is there is there a degree of of having to be like um, an amateur historian of this stuff just just to find it? Because I mean, you know, obviously we're in an era now where you can find any music from anywhere online, usually with a couple of clicks. But I mean, this stuff I'm assuming to get into it at the level you are at, and and to the level of you know knowing the source material as well as you do, and you know, knowing what you want to play and things like that. There's got to be some some research going on and some actual digging, I assume anyway, to find to find the, the right stuff, right? Well, I think you could look at it like that. I don't really think of it as, as research. Well, I, in a good way. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because academic has kind of a, a, a connotation that we don't associate with it. Sure, it's yeah, immense yeah. fun. I mean, and groups like uh, uh, Janet Klein and the Parlor Boys have been bringing back these kind of tunes from that era for, for a long time before we were. And... Uh, it's it's fun to find a group that you like and then sort of find more things and you find more material and then you find more bands and more players and uh, once you start getting into it you know it's like you said you can find anything you want on the internet and uh it's it's very easy to find more things that, that sort of catch your ear yeah mm. yeah for sure i mean it, i guess it is like anything else i mean like i'm, I'm a huge nerd for you know a very specific style of early early 80s reggae and like you know by a particular producer and i go seek out all the least 45s and stuff and it's i'm sure it's exactly the same thing but i feel like my stuff that i'm nerdy about is is considerably more accessible just because it came out you know within the past <laughs> few decades you'd be surprised you'd be yeah? surprised yeah. it's uh you know you have to look for it but uh i mean 20s and 30s music is around um yeah Sure you you... Look at things like... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm thinking going back to the, the jazz thing where you look at jazz standards. I mean, almost everything they, they play that's, that's a, a standard repertoire is 80, 100 years old. You sure. Know, they have tunes that are written in the 20s and they survive, not because they're old, but because they're good and they're accessible. And people, even if they don't know they know it, they sort of latch on to the, the, the way the songs are constructed harmonically and melodically. And it's something that you can, you can latch your ear onto very easily. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's accessible. I think it's not esoteric or it's not right. really cerebral. It's just well written songs, and uh, hopefully we do them justice. And a lot of those songs went through several generations. I mean, a lot of the songs that like jazz musicians in the fifties and sixties were playing were songs that were written as early as the twenties or earlier. Sure. So uh, in that sense, it's also kind of a natural transition if you're if you listen to jazz music. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you feel that, you know, with some of these songs that have that have lasted, you know, a century basically at this point, do you hear kind of a through line from that stuff into more modern eras of music? Like, because you're so immersed in this, this, this stuff from back then, are, are you picking up kind of, uh, you know, musical things that are coming out in music that came out years later? Is it obvious to you that maybe isn't obvious to someone else that, <laughs> oh, this was, you know, something originated by so-and-so in 1923 or something? Like, is that, does that happen or... or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe in subtle ways. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. with, with the whole, uh, you know, Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett reviving the Great American sure, Songbook sure. again for another generation. Uh, or Christina Aguilera doing an Andrew Sisters style thing and Bette Midler doing it before her. Um, uh, my dad mentioned that we, we do the song Java Jive, right? Okay. And so my dad said, yeah, I like that song. That's Manhattan Transfer. <laughs> yeah, that's Manhattan Transfer, you know, from the 80s, but it was yeah. originally the ink spots back in the 1930s so you sort of have this of uh, you know re constant reboots of not only the style but this material yeah and so John and i went through all these incarnations in various decades with people covering it and putting their own spin on it and right up till the present so it, people even if they don't know they know the song again they've they may have heard it somewhere and it's kind of familiar to them for some reason yeah yeah it's, that's interesting actually yeah for sure is it um when you're playing so if you take a song like that that you're doing are you trying to keep it as as like legitimate to the to the original version as possible or are you taking elements from those various versions over the decades and incorporating some of that as well no and well okay <laughs> so <laughs> we don't try to stick to the the original version necessarily at all because um when you take a song like a jazz standard um it's more like a, pardon the cliche, it's more like a blank canvas, you know, sure, you, can, sure. you can flat out copy somebody else's arrangement, or you can take it and, yeah, put your own spin on it, but staying true to the era, which is a lot of what we do, is we, we write most of our own arrangements mm -hmm. um, based off of other songs, um, but we just kind of do what we want with them, I guess, especially since, you know, a lot of the songs that we're taking aren't necessarily three-part harmony. Um, 
some of them are, but a lot of them, you know, we kind of adapt to our instrumentation and, and our, you know, what we have available to us. Um, so yeah, I, I guess a lot of it is like original arrangements, but staying true to the, the style. Okay. Because it's it's kind of hard to track down what the original recording of anything is in in this. <laughs> sure, I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and it's interesting you keep mentioning jazz too, because clearly you you have jazz strong jazz elements in what you in what you do. But you know, and then this is maybe just as someone who's kind of uninitiated to that 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 twenty stuff. But to me, it sounds like pop that has a jazz tinge to it. So I I, I keep almost forgetting that it's jazz but it, i mean it is right i mean it, but, but it's it's do you know what i mean like it's kind of um because i'm thinking of jazz and i'm thinking yeah something that my jazz that i listen to is all you know 60s and later so it's it's weird because yeah, jazz clearly is there and it clearly predates the stuff i'm thinking of in my head when i think of jazz but yeah it's it's, it's interesting because it sounds like pop music to me but it it's not only pop music <laughs> well, it's it's uh, there's definitely a, a lot of influence, and there's there's jazz in it, in as much as there was sort of back then. Yeah. Um, but going back to your other question, like, do do we adapt these songs? Absolutely, we do. And like Shanoa said, st staying true to the air, like she's a big Boswell Sisters fan, and so am I. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, the three part harmonies, the way she'll arrange them, uh, is sort of in the style of the Boswell Sisters, even though it's a song that they may not have ever recorded. Okay. Okay. Right. And see, I'm a, I'm a big Bing Crosby fan and all the, the groups that he played with. So there's a lot of, when I arrange something, there's a lot of those elements in it. So, of course, and of course, we all have the improvisation aspect in, in most Right, from the jazz stuff. backgrounds, I guess, right? Yeah. That, that, so that comes from, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's I don't know, it's, uh, I, I just keep thinking what people, I mean, you're into something that is not weird, but it seems weird. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, you know, it, I, I, I completely get it because I'm into like very specific stuff too and it just this is I think it's partially because I don't have the it's out of my frame of reference right like I mean I've heard I guess some some of those songs like you said they they've been done so many times over the years by by different artists and a lot of the stuff you played at the show I saw was was familiar and I recognized you know even if it was just snippets of something or even a full song it's like oh I, I know this I've heard this but I feel like it's just so outside of my my realm of knowledge of music that it's it almost seems like you're on another planet in the best possible way. Like <laughs> I don't mean that as an insult at all. It's just you're doing this thing that I think that most people, you know, uh, who were born in the past fifty years even, like, are not into. And then you've you've obviously you're putting something together that that really works and is really appealing, even to people who are not familiar with it. So yeah, I mean. I don't know if it's a question, but uh, I guess congratulations on, on making that work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we hope so. I mean, that, that's the goal, yo. Yeah, it, it's hard not to like this kind of music. Yeah. You know? Even if you're not, like, into it. Um, like, it, like I'm, I mean, it's, they're usually really catchy tunes. They're funny. They usually have, like, you know, strange, like, wordplay or, like, yeah, you know, yeah. They're, they're cheeky. They, you know, they swing. Um, you know, I... I try to, I mean, okay, I try not to also, but I try to jam pack as much as I can into an arrangement. <laughs> and I know Jonathan's guilty of that too. And sometimes it can be a lot of fun. Like it's, you know, it's um, like the songs themselves are um, like, they're well-written songs. They're good. A lot of them are like, you know, um, have some sort of quality to them that makes yeah. them, whether it's like lyrically, harmonically, um, and then, you know, on top of that, whatever we add, it's just, you know, it's fun music. And yeah. even if you're not into it, how could you not like it? That's what I think anyway. I'm not biased at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right, though. I think, yeah, even if you don't have uh, an idea, you, you don't have the background for it, you, you can still, you can still definitely enjoy it. And it has that, that corniness to it, right? Like, I mean, with yeah. some lyrics, it's, it's, it's hokey. And I, I don't know if that's just maybe that was a sense of humor at the time. And it, it maybe has not translated as well. But it, it's, it's kind of this quaint, like, you know, um, the, the jokes in it are, are they're, they're like beyond dad jokes. They're <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like next level, it's, it's like grandpa jokes or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But not without a certain charm though, which is what I like about it. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So uh, like I said a few times, like, I did see you live recently and that's a rare thing during this pandemic. How has this affected kind of your group's um, ability to do what you want to do? Because, you know, everyone has been affected by this in some way or another. Um, you're lucky enough you got to play a show at least the one show i'm not sure if you've done others but i mean I, you know i've been doing these remotely i used to do them in person but i've been doing them remotely for like six months now and every every artist i talk to has had a different experience of 
how this whole COVID thing has affected them. So what's your experience been like trying to, you know, exist as a band in an era when shows are basically don't exist? Um, I think we had another show, didn't we, Jonathan? I, what, like as a trio? No, we were going to. We, we'd had one other show booked. Um, but I think the Red House one may have been the only one we actually went through with. Okay. So yeah. It's nice because like we actually, we got to get together, got to get together. Oh boy. Uh, those are some tenses. And, uh, and uh, we recorded a few songs. Um, so we, we don't really have any um, like just audio recordings, but now we've got some sort of informal videos and, cool. you know, stuff that we can use, um, which was a lot of fun. And, you know, it was good to, to promote the show. Um, but uh, I, I mean, as a group, I guess, like other than the, those videos and this one gig, we've been taking it pretty easy. Um, Jonathan and I have played a few duo gigs. Um, but I, again, it kind of like the gigs were gone for several months. They came back for a month or two and now they're kind of dwindling off again. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not great. <laughs> this yep. pandemic. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tough not to lose momentum, especially if there's no, you know, usually you, re you rehearse a lot more often and more intensely if there's a, a performance coming up. Sure. And when there's, no performances coming up and nothing on the horizon it's easy to kind of you know get bogged down and say well should we rehearse so we're trying to yeah, you know keep busy and keep writing new arrangements and use this uh, use this time to come up with new material cool and luckily there's only three of us so you know we can socially distance if we do have to rehearse yeah yeah but uh it's, we're not we're not discouraged and we're looking forward to when uh, when gigs come back and we'll be ready do you have uh, any kind of plans for whenever things get back to some semblance of normal? Like, do you have sort of ideas of what you want to do as far as shows or recording or anything like that? Or is it just um, wait to see? We're, we're kind of a group who likes to play as much as possible. So when we can get back to playing, I, I know that's something that I think I could say for all of us, we're going to be down to do. Cool. Um, yeah. I, I mean, other than that, I, I don't know. We we have some new arrangements on the back burner. Jonathan's been writing one. Um, I have one that we haven't quite touched yet, but we'll hopefully be doing so soon. Cool. So um, I, I guess when that happens, we will start working out the new arrangements and uh, uh, book as many gigs as we can. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, so it's a good way to deal with it, I guess. Just just pack in as many shows as possible, for sure. Absolutely. Where do you where do you play? I mean, you know, I I feel like what you're doing is 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 nebulous is not the right word, but I just really like saying nebulous. <laughs> but it, it, that's a good it, word. That's a great it's word. Nebulous enough that I mean, you could play, you know, potentially anywhere, really, right? I mean, especially if you're able to strip it down to a duo or the three three piece with the with the percussion. Um, do you sort of have like what kind of shows have you done so far with this group? What, what kind of venues are you playing at? Uh, we do uh, Smith at In at the Forks, uh, which is kind of a good fit for us because sure. it's, it's, it's got jazz and it's got like folk and pop and country. And it's got it's Smith in the name, so we're... Exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. We're basically perfect for it. Uh, we used to do uh, McNally as Okay, well. that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Shannon's? Shannon's is funny. Um, we would do Shannon's, like the pub. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, usually there's a, like a sports game, like a, like hockey or something going on behind us. And so it's, we, we played this one show that was packed with a bunch of like sports fans and we were like, oh, this isn't going to go well. They're not going to like us at all. <laughs> but they did. <laughs> it was like one of our best shows. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It, like, it seemed like everyone had a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. Jonathan, what, what kind oh, of... Oh, we, we, we play anywhere. We did the uh, the Christmas lights last year. Yeah, the zoo lights. Yeah. So and, and we're, like you said, because we're very compact, we're just a trio and we don't require a lot of band publication and we're not overly loud. We're pretty pretty mobile, so we can do pretty much anything. You know, we can, right. do, we can do outdoor festivals, we can do indoor gigs, we can do lounges, pretty uh, pretty much anywhere because we're, we're pretty... have a small footprint, let's say. <laughs> And you're obviously non-offensive, you know, subject matter wise or, or volume wise either, right? You're not, you're not going to blow anyone's ears out with uh, <laughs> We've with never that. been asked to turn down. Right, right. And I suppose too, this could probably, you could probably do anything from busking on a street corner to playing a house show to playing a, a club. I mean, really, right? It's just kind of the sky's limit. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. <laughs> so 
if people are hearing about you for the first time on the show, I know you said that you, you know, you just have those videos up at this point, but how do they find out more information about what you're up to and, and where to find, you know, uh, future information about shows once things get back to normal or, or hear some music, see some videos? Our, we have an Instagram and a Facebook page. Um, okay. On Facebook, we're just Smith's Onion, like spelled how it sounds. Right. Don't be fooled. Um, <laughs> we also have, uh, our what's our Instagram? I think it's Smith's underscore Onion. Okay. But the underscore, not the word underscore. Just the, right, just right, the right, right, right. Also, the for, also for confusion purposes. <laughs> yes, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll post, uh, I think our our Facebook page is where we'll post most of it. I, I've started posting our events, or event, on right, <laughs> Manitoba right. Music as well, on MB Live. Cool. Um, so I guess those would be the three places to check out. Um, all of our videos all of our three or four videos are on uh, Facebook. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And we post a lot of like, whenever we do a rehearsal, we'll sort of film a bit of a tune that we're working on and we'll post that to Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just keep checking back. There'll be, new, there'll be new material as, uh, as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're dealing with, uh, I guess the whole social media era, which is definitely not something the, the, the 1920s <laughs> no, <laughs> ever, no, ever dreamed of existing, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's cool how you can combine, present day that you know and then 100 years back and, and meld them together into this weird uh <laughs> yeah, amalgamation of both well we're not going to not take advantage of, of course of course <laughs> yeah of course you have to right yeah i well, run the instagram post from my typewriter <laughs> <laughs> i like it i like it <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's good it's good it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm really glad i'm not recording intros for these shows very often anymore <laughs> because and it's mainly because i just don't want to say the name <laughs> <laughs> some, I was convinced at the beginning that it was going to be like Smith's onion, two words, and it was some kind of Smithsonian pun. But then <laughs> as soon as we started this, you, ordered, you mentioned it as Smithsonian. Now I'm just, I, I can't decide. So I'm going to just maybe leave, <laughs> leave it at that. And uh, people should check you out. They should go to the Instagram. They should go to the Facebook. They should uh, watch the videos. And hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later, shows will happen again and people can actually check you out. And because uh, it was good. Proud. I mean, I liked it. My kids liked it. They, there's a pretty yeah. diverse audience at the show as well, I think. And like, you know, uh, age wise and uh, people seem to be digging it. So it's a, it's definitely a cool um, project and you know, hopefully, hopefully hope to see you guys do more, more things in the future. Yeah, Fingers crossed. You. Hope to see you there. Hi. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to stop recording here because zoom is about to kick us out because they give okay. you the, the, the free one gives you a time limit. So, oh. um, but that's, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I, I, so I got all everything I need recording wise. Um, is there any way you could send me audio from some of those videos you've done? Absolutely. Yeah. Then I can just kind of put it into, you know, natural pauses in the conversation, wherever it fits. That would be awesome. Sure and, uh, you, you got the technology? <laughs> I do. I have it in my typewriter. <laughs> All right, of course, of course. Send it yeah. by telegraph. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so this will probably come out, uh, I'm thinking next Sunday, maybe not the one coming, the one after or. Something like that, anyway. <laughs> I have a Great. bunch already recorded. I got to figure out where they go. But I'll give you a heads up, and if you can share it and stuff once it comes out, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. You got it. Thanks yeah, so right on. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. I'm um, glad we could do this, and uh, I'll definitely uh, be checking you guys out later at some point uh, if shows ever happen again. Awesome. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Later. <laughs>